Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatorial. This is really just a little video to share a little window into a one tiny aspect of my life. I'm, I'm getting quite interested in knife making. Um, I guess this is partly inspired by, well, my general interest. Let's face it, I am interested in knives. Um, something that I've been doing for a while, as you know, is restoration. So I do uh, restoration work on antique swords and other antique weapons that come to me and this is one of the most uh, recent ones I've done actually so I was up in um where was I? I was in Bradford uh, and Leeds uh, for the event Kings of the North, um, which I was teaching at, uh, a HEMA event run by Colin Fieldhouse. And uh, on the way down, I, I often, you know, if I go to an area that I'm not usually in, that's for anyone who doesn't know, that's in the north of England, what I would call the north anyway, and I'm from the south, quite near to the south coast actually. Um, and um, so when I'm in an area I'm not usually finding myself in, I always try and hit the local antique shop and you know try and find anything that I might want to buy basically uh, sometimes buying stuff to sell sometimes obviously f for myself now I should have really uh, photographed or uh, shown this before I did work to it but it was in appalling condition it is a Sheffield Bowie knife so quite appropriately I did buy it relatively near to Sheffield um, as I've mentioned in previous videos, a lot of the Bowie knives or Bowie knives uh, of the 19th century, even the ones in America, even the ones being carried in the US Civil War, for example, were actually made in Sheffield, England, where this was made. Uh, this is not a 19th century one, but it's quite early 20th century. It's probably about World War One uh, era in date, and it's made by J. Noel and Noel uh, and Sons, <coughs> and. Um, that's a company that's been around since I think, I think way back in the 19th century, if I remember correctly. Um, but this is not one of the 19th century ones, as mentioned. <clears throat> but um, from the design of it, particularly from the style of guard, I know it's a relatively early one, but it was in really, really neglected condition when I got it. And I got it pretty damn cheap. Uh, I think I paid less than £40 for it. Um, usually in this sort of condition, in cleaned up condition or in nice condition, um, these would be more like about a hundred pounds. So I paid like 30 something pounds for it. So, you know, not much really, um, and better than buying, uh, a, a much better quality knife than spending 30 something pounds on a modern made knife. It's carbon steel, Sheffield, marked to the maker. You won't be able to see that on camera, but it is actually etched in there. But the whole blade was uh, rusty and black. I completely have uh, resurfaced it. Now, some people may go, oh, that's too brutal, brutal kind of restoration. To be completely honest, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care about you people. Um, this had no intrinsic antique value whatsoever. It was a 30 pound object. I was buying it because I wanted to uh, restore and bring back a knife into its uh, into a functional state. The edge was also a little bit uh, knocked around and it wasn't sharp anymore or anything like that. Um, uh, but the uh, cow horn, I believe they are, uh, quite attractive cow horn grips uh, were in reasonable condition but quite a uh, rough surface so anyway I've completely redone the whole thing I've um, actually sanded down and then uh, slightly polished up to a kind of satin finish the grips I've also rounded them slightly because they'd got a little bit knocked on the edges um, and they, they were a bit rough and starting to peel as many of you will know horn is made up like layers um, so it's important to kind of keep it sealed otherwise it kind of deconstructs itself uh, almost like layers of paper um, so I, I basically sanded the edges round so it's all kind of solid again. Everything was tight and solid, there's nothing moving on this knife. It has a brass guard, which I've polished up moderately. Um, I've actually polished the edge more than the flat surfaces. I've left some, some aged patina um, on the actual surfaces of the knife. The blade needed utter restoration, and in doing so, I actually took it from a secondary bevel to a single bevel. So now it's super sharp. I've sharpened it myself um, on a DC4 whetstone to finish off, but I started off, I actually used a, a Dremel tool, I used a buffing wheel, and I used sandpaper as well. So I completely resurfaced the knife and re-beveled it. So it's got a really nice um, single profile bevel. And the full sedge, I like a full sedge if possible to be a real full sedge. And usually on Sheffield knives, they're not. They are a full sedge without an edge, as it were. So I actually have um, it, uh, it implemented an actual edge on the back edge there. So it's now sharp on this side and obviously fully sharp here. It's all solid, all nice and shiny and um, 
I know it's a, I know the maker. I've managed to preserve that one of the tricky things actually was preserving the etched maker's name on the blade whilst polishing the blade. And initially I worked around the acid etched name and left a sort of patch. My original idea was to leave a sort of original patina or original uh, or how I found it uh, finished aged essentially aged patina and aged surface kind of rectangle and polish around it but it turned out to be too difficult to do that so what I essentially did is I polished the whole thing but I just went very lightly over the bit where the name is um, and you can still say it see it it's J Noel and Sons Sheffield England established AD 17 something <laughs> 1700 maybe there you go that's when they were established um i was looking for that date earlier um so that's the first thing and kind of i often do well not often but i from time to time do little restoration projects like that some of which i've shown on this channel in the past there are some knives and object swords that are valuable enough and of such antique value that I would either not do any restoration on them or anything I do on them I would only do lightly, I would only, you know, do bare minimum, cleaning them up basically. So I kind of, I kind of, uh, what I will do to an old object is very much dictated by the object itself, what its history is, its provenance, its value, uh, its rarity, that kind of stuff. In terms of this, I literally wanted to turn this from a manky old, probably early, maybe mid 20th century Bowie knife that had been neglected into a nice condition, functional one that I could use, which I have done. Um, so uh, one thing I'll just mention just for interest, um, one of the ways you can date this style of knife, here is one made in the 1990s uh, by Wright and Son, A Wright and Son, which are still uh, selling Sheffield knives. So this is essentially a modern made one and you'll notice that it's the very similar size and shape to this one which is earlier 20th century. Um, but there are some differences and one of the main differences you'll see is this style of guard which is just a flat uh, plate uh, you d they seem to have most makers in Sheffield seem to have stopped doing that at some point in the 20th century and they all went they all switched or most of them switched anyway unless they were doing a deliberately a knife in the 19th century style they switched to doing knives with this inbuilt bolster now you do find that style of guard with an inbuilt um, sort of ferrule or bolster there in the 19th century. I'm not saying that this is only a modern style of guard, but for some reason Sheffield makers just completely switched to pretty much only, like 95% of them, only doing this style of guard after about the Second World War. And I don't know why that was. It got fashionable, I don't know. Um, so you'll also notice that the rivets are much larger. That seems to be a kind of World War I, World War II, perhaps military inspired thing. The uh, rivets or pins on the earlier um, example are much, uh, much smaller in general. There is one other difference that you sometimes find, not always, again, it's a tendency rather than a rule. The tangs on the older Bowie knives tend to go from thick, obviously the base of the blade is thick here, so the base of the tang here is thick, and they actually tend to taper slightly, so the tang actually gets thinner. That gives quite a nice balance to the, to the knife because it means it's not too back-weighted, it keeps the, the weight in the center. Um, the modern made ones I think are la probably laser cut or some other um, CNC out of a flat sheet and so they seem to basically be the same thickness here as they are here as the tang is here as the tang is here if they're full width tang and you can see the tang of course. So they don't have so much distal taper either in the blade or in the tang whereas the older ones uh, tend to. This has distal taper both in the blade and in the tang. Um, I would just also quickly mention, before I move on, I'm going to talk spe specifically about this knife at some future point. Uh, this is a, another, I've done a video about Anglo-Indian uh, Bowie knives and hunting knives. This is a new example by Arna Chellum of Salem that I have procured. A nice big one, it's a big blade, I think it's 13 inch blade um, at, for tiger hunting, basically a, a hunting big game in, in uh, India. Um, I will talk more about that at some point. That is an example of a knife that is valuable enough and rare enough that I am only going to do very light uh, restoration on. Um, uh, right, okay, finally, knife making. So, as mentioned, I'm, I'm, I've always had a, um, I, I have dabbled with knife making actually. I've made a rondel dagger, um, I bought uh, blades from, so I've never done blade making as such myself. 
mm, kind of a little bit, but I've never done proper, I wouldn't say I've done blade making, but what I have done is I've purchased blades and then I've made hilts. So basically kind of like the work of a, a cutler, I think it would be, a hilt maker. Um, and I've done, I've used blades that I've got from Todd in the past, for example, and I've hilted them up myself. I've done a Ronald dagger like that, uh, which I've actually shown on this channel. Um, and uh, a bollock knife and various other things. And uh, you know, if, you're, if you've been watching this channel for years, you'll know that I do dabble with little projects. But something I've got into recently is I've noticed that you can buy um, that quite a lot of knife making supplies these days. It actually seems to have become a more mainstream hobby, probably thanks partly to things like Forged in Fire. And um, I have been um, getting some blades and starting to hilt them up. And um, you can still buy bare blades from Sheffield and this is actually John Noel and Sons of Sheffield so that is the same company on paper although it's now owned by I think Wright and Sons it's now owned by or Adams now I think it's owned by Adams but it's it's the company kind of went defunct in the 20th century and got bought out by another company but that at least according to the uh, stamp on the blade is the same maker as that although obviously there's probably about 100 years age difference between them uh, but it's really nice that um, Sheffield and obviously there's makers in America and Poland and Germany, Solingen, all over the world that are making blades and you can buy bare blades and if you want to have a go at uh, making your own knife you don't necessarily have to have the skills to forge or heat treat uh, blades. You can buy good quality blades really for what I consider small amount of money for the quality of work and the, uh, the value of the blade once it's been hilted. You can buy a bare blade and then you can buy hilt components and make them yourself. Um, this is what I'm doing. Maybe I'll maybe I'll film a bit of it and show it on camera. But uh, just as an example, you can get uh, bits of um, you know you can buy antler. Obviously, you can buy all different types of wood, Makata, G10, all kinds of stuff. So you can buy uh, hilting materials, and obviously you can get full full tangs, full width tangs, and make uh, grip slabs. Or you can get um, these types of through tangs, hidden tangs um, that you can then put into. Uh, uh, horn, antler, bone, all sorts of stuff. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to have a little go at some hilt making. So what I'm personally, my, what drives me is it's very difficult for me to buy modern Bowie knives that are in the 19th century style that look like 19th century knives. But I do own 19th century and early 20th century knives. So for me, what I'm interested in trying to do is trying to almost replicate some of those, the look and the feel of 19th century knives, particularly as you know, I love the Anglo-Indian hunting knives from the late 19th century from um, British Raj, um, and trying to replicate the look and size and feel materials um, like this is roe deer um, antler of uh, some of those things with uh, modern made blades in a traditional style anyway there we go a little insight into my life um, and if you've I've got a question for you actually if you've got any good links to uh, blade blanks um, for making knives or indeed to knife making materials or to knife making videos particularly making handles and different materials for knives um, so other youtube videos other channels to recommend post below i'd love to see that stuff i'm watching a bunch of youtube videos at the moment on uh, hilt making and and tips for for different type of ways of putting holes in in antlers and that kind of stuff you can burn it in or drill it in or whatever different ways of fixing them um you know different pins and different uh, obviously peening and glue, different types of glues and this kind of stuff so if you've got any uh, links to interesting websites or videos or um, other you know shops selling um, blade making or knife making stuff then uh, post it below because I'm really really interested and I'm sure other people who watch this video either now or in the future will appreciate those links as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon for another video. Cheers folks! Thanks for watching we've got extra videos on Patreon please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers folks!